Welcome back, 4-Hers. We're going to cover now the order Lepidoptera. This section is going to cover Lepidoptera for all of our juniors. Um, also, of course, remember that intermediates and seniors are going to need to know junior level insects as well. So Lepidoptera are, are our butterflies and our moths. I kind of remember that Lepidoptera means Lepidoptera because it's a, it, it's a pretty name and butterflies in general are kind of pretty to look like to look at. The host on these guys is going to vary. Um, their significance ranges from inconsequential to beneficial to a pest. It just depends on exactly what it is that you're looking at. And of course, these guys have a complete life cycle, which is easy for us to remember because we learn in school about the life cycle of a butterfly, right? How it has uh, the mother lays an egg, the egg hatches into the caterpillar, which is the larva. Then the larva becomes the adult. The, I'm sorry, the larva becomes the pupa. And then, it, and then it becomes the adult or the butterfly form that we recognize. So everybody's going to need to know the black swallowtail. Black swallowtails are nearly completely black with some yellow spots along its wings. Um, intermediates are going to have to know another insect, another swallowtail. It looks kind of similar, but it has a lot more yellow on it. These guys are found, the host is going to be carrots, um, celery, dill, and that's supposed to be weeds, not weekends. Um, the caterpillars are kind of unique in color. These are considered beneficial, although they will feed on those plants. We usually keep them around because we like that they are um, pollinators. Okay, and then this guy is called the bullworm or the corn earworm. Their host is cotton. Um, on the contest, it says cotton, corn, and others. Um, corn earworm that makes it kind of easy. Crops would be another option if that was given to you. They feed on over 250 plants. The reason how I, so it's a, the bullworm is a moth. Most of the things we're looking at are kind of unique in the way that they look. The corn earworm, I remember that this is the corn earworm because it's kind of um, yellow and corn is yellow. This is considered a pest. Remember if it has the, a plant in its name, it's probably going to be a pest. Um, complete life cycle. And one thing I didn't mention before is that all of the butterflies have these siphoning mouth parts. Siphoning is your best answer. If you don't see siphoning, then sucking. It's a type of sucking mouth part, part or hostilate mouth part. Uh, the fall army worm is another guy that you're going to have to know. The fall army worm, some people confuse these for underwing moths because the wings underneath are a different color than those on top. Don't let yourself get confused with that. Fall armyworm are pests. You're not going to see the, lar the larva or the pupa. What you are going to see is the adult. And when I look at the adult, I see white wings underneath, and the front wings kind of look like camouflage, like you would need in the army. So that's how I um, memorize those guys. The hosts for the fall armyworm are grasses, um, and they are definitely considered a pest. Then we have the gray hair streak. The gray hair streak is our only gray insect. It has um, not a swallow tail with the, the longer, thicker tails. It has just a little streak that comes down. That's how they get their name. These guys are considered a pest. Um, they are found on cotton. They, they feed on the bowl of the cotton, or I'm sorry, the square of the cotton. Square is part of the life cycle of, of the cotton before it becomes a fluffy thing that you see. Um, so cotton, they're also known to feed on hibiscus, but I don't think that's super important for you guys to memorize. And it's a cute little um, butterfly. Luna moth is, an, is another moth that is green. It's the only green butterfly that we have. They're out at night, and I suppose that's how they get the name Luna, like lunar. They are considered inconsequential because although they're found on trees, um, oak trees especially, they don't feed enough on the tree to be considered a true pest. So the host for these guys, a, a number of different trees, but oak is the most important one. Complete life cycle, siphoning mouth parts, luna moth. And then we have the monarch. And so this one should be pretty easy for everybody because everybody knows what a monarch looks like. This is our Texas state butterfly. They, they're found on milkweed, that's their host. They lay their eggs on the milkweed and the larva are found only on milkweed, feeding on it, and milkweed is a weed, 
And so if you were a farmer, you don't want a bunch of milkweed in your um, in your crops. And so monarchs are actually beneficial in reducing milkweed for you. They're also beneficial because they are pollinators. I would know a little bit about them is that they have this thing called aposomatic coloration. So just like our ladybug, things that are brightly colored have really distinct patterns or have a lot of hair on them. Their coloration or the way that their body is makes you remember them next time. You look at the monarch and you recognize it, right? Well, if I was a bird and I ate that caterpillar, it would taste bad. It would make my stomach hurt and I would spit it out. If um, if I'm that bird, I'm going to remember, I don't want to eat anything that's striped like that. And so that coloration helps their pre predators to remember what they are so they don't want to feed on them next time. I would also know that this is an insect that does massive migrations and they travel through Texas on their way to Mexico um, two times a year. They go north from the north to the south in the fall time um, and then they'll spend the winter in Mexico. They'll die and the eggs that they hatch, the eggs that they laid will hatch and those guys will go up um, north in the springtime then turn back around and go back down south. The polyphemus moth um, is a brown moth that has those bright eyes on its face. Um, it also uses oaks as its host. So Luna moth and Polyphemus use the oaks as their host, oak trees. They're called giant silk moths. They make a lot of silk around them when they build their cocoon. Their cocoon. Um, they, the pupa uses the leaves for the cocoon, but it uses its silk to hold, to hold those leaves together. So these guys are considered also inconsequential because they don't cause enough damage on the oak trees to be considered a true pest. This is my favorite butterfly. This is a red admiral. It's black or like a really dark brown and it has red a red pattern on it. A real pretty insect, I think. Um, it is also considered inconsequential. It feeds on something called a nettle. Nettles are a type of weed. Um, so that just memorize that they're found on weeds or nettles. And an interesting fact about them is that the males are kind of territorial, so they'll protect their little patches that they're that they're on. Um, so once again, inconsequential. Um, found on nettles, complete life cycle, siphoning mouth parts. The underwing moth is the one that I said that sometimes people think is a um, army worm. It's not an army worm. Look at the bottom of the wings. They're bright in color. They're pink or they're orange or they're red. They're not white like an army worm is. These guys are also considered inconsequential. They're just found feeding on trees. The four wings are camouflaged. And if I was a lizard coming up to eat it and this moth might just open up its wings and it would startle the lizard in enough and it would give it enough time so that it had a chance to fly away. There's a wood nymph. Um, wood nymphs are inconsequential. They're found in thick, thick woods, so they'd be in a really thick forested area, which is kind of different because most butterflies like to be out in the open in an empty pasture. They have, they're brown, they have eye spots on their back. Um, they are just kind of, they're, they're kind of a boring moth with eye, I mean a boring um, butterfly with eye spots which makes them different from most of the other things that we've looked at. The only other boring insects that we've looked at that weren't really brightly colored or very pretty was the corn earworm, but that guy's yellow. So that covers all of our Lepidoptera that juniors need to know. Remember, if you're an intermediate or a senior, you're also responsible for knowing all of the lower level insects. So intermediates and seniors will both need to know this information. If you're an intermediate or senior, Log on to the next YouTube video so that you're able to see the, the Lepidoptera group that you're responsible for.